One year ago today, the tri-state community was rocked by the death of 16-year-old Kyle Plush. Plush was pinned inside his minivan while reaching for a tennis racket. It happened in the Seven Hills School parking lot. Now he called 911, but key details like his precise location and the dire nature of his situation never really reached first responders. In a hearing last May, officials say training and technology issues led to Plush's death. Many changes have come to the Cincinnati 911 system in the past year. One of the champions for change is Cincinnati City Council member Amy Murray. She joins us now on set. I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for having me here today. Let's talk about the changes. Most notably, we were talking about it just before this interview. Yes, so SMART 911, mm -hmm. and this is something that the Plush family has really worked with us in coordinating and in rolling out. They did a PSA for SMART 911, and what this does, most of the phone calls right now that come to our emergency center are through cell phones. It yeah. used to be it was landlines. I know. So if you call from your mm -hmm. landline, we will have your information, your name, your address, and at least we'll be able to tell the firefighters where to go or our first responders, the police. If you call from a cell phone, we have no information on you whatsoever. Right. It pops up and our 911 call takers see an empty screen. So uh, uh, 911, smart 911 is a way where you can go onto your computer and log in and give us the information you want us to have in case you have called 911 and want to make sure we get to you as quickly as possible. And the basic amount of information is your name, your address and a contact. Because if we have a contact for you and if you call once and you get disconnected because you're in the middle of an emergency mm -hmm. and you can't stay on the call, we then, we always try and call you back. But if we can't reach you, then we'll have a contact, someone else that we can call and say, we haven't heard from your loved one. They've called 911, we can't reach them. Do you know where they are? It can also give you information that if you have someone at home that's elderly and maybe can't get out of the house in case of a fire, it will give them, the firefighters, that information so when they're on the way to your house, they'll know that maybe there's an elderly person there that has walking issues. So when they go in, they'll know who to look for. Mm -hmm. This is a life-saving step that we have taken, and I encourage everyone that's listening to go to smart911.com right now and sign up. You know, it's definitely going to save lives, and when you need the first responders there, we need to have the information to help you. One thing I want to ask is, do you think what happened last year could happen now given all of the changes that we've seen and that you've championed. Yes, so we have made so many changes, mm -hmm. so I, I think it would be really hard for that to happen again. There's human error in all, you know, in all of this type of public safety, so I would like to say that wouldn't happen. What has happened, our call in numbers right now, so when someone calls, we try and answer mm -hmm. the phone within 10 seconds. In 2017, only 42% of the calls were done within 10 seconds picked up. Mm. This year, April to date, 97% of the calls are picked up within 10 seconds. That's huge change. It's huge. Our training has changed. Everything has changed in the department, our leadership. So I would like to say that cannot happen again. Um, we have put in the training and we put in new technology like Smart 911. Mm -hmm. We now have texting to 911. And this has just come about. So if you need to call, let's say, for example, the Fifth Third tragedy, if yeah. someone is there and there's a mass shooting, you don't want to call 911 and speak into the phone. Mm -hmm. But now you have the ability, and this just rolled out, way to, do, to do text to 911. So, you know, part of it, though, is when we looked at it, we saw the technology that we needed to change. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have the training and if you don't have the right staffing numbers, it's not going to help. So we've looked at both staffing and increased our staffing numbers and made sure that we've had the right training. Council Member Murray, thank you for bringing us up to date on all of the changes and for joining us this evening on uh, what has been a really sensitive anniversary. Absolutely.